Hey guys, good new week to you all. Whether you are or not in a relationship, this is true subtle secret of how to proceed. As this gentleman claims, it is challenging, but as I've already stated, it requires practice. Please visualize yourself in the scene and listen to it carefully. Using earphones and headphones will enhance your pleasure. Have a great week. Enjoy and chill. Hi. We are. <laughs> <sighs> this is the first conference that we've been to. My wife and I have been listening to uh, a lot of your teachings for a year or two years now. We've been on kind of an ongoing uh, spiritual journey basically since we've met. We've been married for 15 years. It seems sort of the theme that I've been feeling today has been a lot about relationships. Because everything is. Because everything is. There's no creation that is not co-creation. Yeah. yeah. When we first met, it's one of my favorite stories to tell is about how we met. It was, knowing what I know now, it was really, really vortexy. Like it was just, <laughs> we felt just, I don't know, like it was, we're definitely on high flying discs for, for quite a while. It was, a, it was very quick how we, how we met, first got together, got married right away and, and uh, started our lives together. But we've always had the sense that our purpose in life has always been really inextricably like connected to each other. Yeah. And I think sometimes we struggle well, with conflict feel, there. You can feel how you're really better together. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we're both in the vortex at the same time, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. And when one of us is, and one of us is holding back. Then the other one has me. some work to do. Yes, usually me. <laughs> so. Well, we have a question for you. So when you're both in the receptive mode, it goes along swimmingly. When one or the other of you isn't, then not so good. And are you saying that you're usually the one who isn't? Yeah. And does your wife point that out? Sometimes. Then she isn't either. <laughs> Because when you really are in alignment, you're not in somebody else's business about whether they are or not. That's the thing about this co-creating is that it's lovely when you stand as examples, when somebody's looking at you and you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, then you're easy to look at and it's beneficial. But if that person is making you responsible to always be that way so that when I look at you, then I get what I need from you, then that's conditional. And that is trepidatious because to hold somebody else responsible for your connection to your inner being, there's no control at all in that. You can only find control in your own relationship with your own inner being. And you have to let everybody else off the hook and be irrelevant to your alignment. But that's really difficult in a marriage relationship. You're Why? Good. Well, <laughs> you made your relationship with your mate more important than your relationship with your inner being. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> And we see why you would do that because your mate is right there in all that physicality and your inner being is subtle. You have to tune to your inner being where you can be in the room with somebody who's in a bad mood and still be together, but you can't be with your inner being if you're in a bad mood. And so we get it why the physicality makes it feel maybe more sought after, but it's not a very good choice. We want to hear from you because we really want to hash this out in a way that you can figure out how you can feel good anyway. It's a sort of two edged sword when you say, Oh, we found each other, and oh, we are so happy now that we found each other. But oh, sometimes we do things that bother each other. <laughs> Would you rather be together or not be together? Oh, together, but together and not bugging each other. <laughs> and we say, Just Fan the flames of the positive aspects of it and take your attention away from the other. But most of all, don't let your relationship with anyone be more important than the satisfaction factor that you're seeking by finding the point of view that your inner being finds. Maybe this will help. Do you know that you're an extension of source energy? Yes. And do you know that that means that everyone who's non-physical is potentially and usually looking forward with you? So all of us are 
right in the middle of your business in the sense that we're aware of who you are and what you're asking for in any moment we know what you've asked for we know what's in your vortex and we know where you are in relationship to it and we stand in complete anticipation of that oh we have a story to tell you that will make this point even better one day Esther and friends had been together in California for a few days Esther and her children and their children and friends and their children and they'd been having a wonderful few days together a lot of fun together and there were three children in the mix who are all not really steeped in this so much as aware that their parents are and them sort of doing it naturally and wishing their parents could do it better <laughs> so now the party's over everyone's left except Esther and one friend and they're having lunch one day and Esther is savoring the memory of these delicious times and she's focused on these three kids who are so bright and so clear and so pure and so tuned into source energy and so fresh and new in their life and have so much before them so much is going to unfold and she is saying I feel so fortunate that I get to watch these kids in their expansion in their coming to know things in their alignment and in their not alignment in their process and Esther's friend said to her ooh that must be how our inner beings feel about us and then they sat there with goosebumps all over them and tears running down their face into the fish dinner they were eating Esther does not ever remember a more impactful statement and the reason that we want to give it to you is because we want you to feel how involved and interested and in love with you and yours and your life your inner being is so with all of that coming forward into your moment in time if you could just first of all comprehend that that's happening and often feel it so that you feel the magic of it and that's what happened when the two of you met that's what happened when you were falling in love with each other that's what happened when you instantaneously fell in love with each other that's why that love at first sight in other words you would put each other in your vortex and when for whatever reason you were in the receiving mode and you found each other you both knew it you both knew it in that emphatic way because everyone that is non-physical knew it too and for whatever reason you were both in the receiving mode so you knew it too so you both got to feel what your inner being feels you see if we were standing in your physical shoes that would be our quest in our physical life I want to feel like my inner being feels about this and about this and about this and about this and so maybe your wife's in a bad mood don't relate to her don't empathize with that don't try to get to the bottom of that don't try to fix that because every second you spend trying to figure out what's going on there is a second that you'll spend losing your connection from what really matters and the less you'll have to give to her and other way around that's the best that we can say it how do I get there while I mean it's obviously the other way around when it's easy it's easy what we want you to realize is what you're about to tell us that we've cut you off from is that that's a very conditional love in other words it's easy when everything's going good when you're just observing the condition that's going well and you're feeling good because you've observed the condition that's fine we get why you want to do that we want you to look for positive aspects we just don't want you to be dependent on positive aspects because when you're dependent upon things conditionally being good then you don't have any room for a step one moment you don't have any room for expansion you don't have any way to fulfill your reason for being and you put unreasonable expectations on others and you let them put unreasonable expectations on you feel how good it would feel if you really really messed up on something and someone up close to you is just looking at you like <laughs> as opposed to are you kidding me how many times have we talked about that you have to give yourself the break you see what we're really grooming you all to because you can't control how someone else behaves you can only control your response to their behavior and what you fear is if you don't respond the way they want you to then it gets worse but we really want you to know 
that when you respond the way your inner being responds, then it gets better. It always gets better. So we will let you ask your questions as detailed or as specific as you want. And we will show you what we would do in those specific moments and what we would say. But the thing you have to understand is if you're not ready to be ready to be ready, you're not ready to say it. If you've awakened and you've felt good and you've meditated and you've managed to get your sea legs and you're all full of yourself and you're feeling great, it almost doesn't matter how somebody else is feeling. They're not going to get you. But if you got up and you didn't get yourself tuned in and they got up and they didn't get themselves tuned in, then there's a very strong probability that neither one of you is going to be there in that resourceful place. So you started to ask the question. So what do I do when? I feel like I get in my way a lot. When you said I need to give myself a break, it seems that that sort of rang true to me a little bit. I need to, yeah. that inner conflict that you spoke about earlier is there for me. I need to. We're going to ask you some very straightforward questions. Do you care more about what your wife thinks about you or about your own satisfaction factor? Because if she's like most women, she's trained you to know the answer to that. <laughs> but I am very concerned with how she feels and not, not know, necessarily how, what she thinks of me, but I want her to be happy, right? But we can't ask you a question about how she feels because you can't know that. And so, oh, well, how about this? Would you rather that she cares more about pleasing you or being in sync with who she really oh, is? Oh, being in sync with who she really is. Well, now you answered that easily, but do you really mean it? Yes. Jerry used to say to Esther, you know, you do too much for too many people. It's all right when you do it for me, but you do too much for too many other people. <laughs> and they would both laugh, but they both knew he meant it. <laughs> it's easy to please each other. But there's another factor that most humans haven't been considering. And it goes like this. If you're not tuned in, you really are not going to be that pleasing anyway. No, I'm not. <laughs> and so now what's your question? The question is more about the inner conflict, me getting in my own way. Yes. In uh, universal law terms, what might you do to get in your own way? I get way, opposing way overthinky. I overthink and, stuff. And so let's have this discussion. So can you get the idea, grasp the idea of the difference between a thought that you're thinking and a thought that you're receiving? Oh, yeah. So if you're in the receiving mode and receiving a thought, it's going to feel good. If you're thinking a thought, it might feel good and it might not, but it's a clue. So would that help you when you're thinking a thought that doesn't feel good? Could you abort the thought right away before it gets too much momentum? Or are you not aware that it's coming until it's so big you can't let go of it? Oh, there's definitely a little bit of unawareness because I would like to, as soon as I am aware, I'd like to, let, oh, that's not a thought I want to have. Let's start thinking about happy so, things. Let's. as far as the laws of the universe goes, that seems like a reasonable thing to do. So what keeps you from being able to do that easily? The thought got too much momentum going before you were aware of it. Mm-hmm. Or you're not picky enough about the way you feel. 